Welcome to the Algo Ranch by the Algrand Foundation. Really thrilled to have you all here today. Uh, we, this event was produced by a team of people across uh, multiple groups at the foundation in marketing and ecosystem and, and DevRel and many others. So first I want to thank everybody that was involved in making this happen. Uh, this is a, an enormous amount of work to produce these experiences and uh, I want to make sure I recognize people that have contributed. So, happy to be at East Denver. I'm going to cover a few things in this first presentation of the day. Uh, introduce the developer relations team at the foundation, talk a little bit about the Algrand roadmap and a few things that we've been doing with our chain, talk about staking on Algrand, which is new, uh, talk a little bit about node running, which is very easy to do, and we are very excited about that, and how you can participate in staking on Algrand. So, what is developer relations? Thank you, Gabe, for writing this wonderful mission statement. We are the bridge between our technology and the global developer community. We help people build stuff. Uh, so there's all sorts of educational initiatives, uh, support, advocacy, right, representing developers, and bringing their feedback back to the foundation to make it easier to build stuff on Algorand and strengthen our ecosystem. So first, I want to recognize uh, Gabe and Chris from my DevRel team. Raise your hands. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. And I'm Brian Whippo. I run the DevRel team at the foundation. I jumped ship last spring from a 15 year career in TradFi at Morgan Stanley and decided I'd had enough of that and joined the Web3 space and it's been a roller coaster ever since, but I, I wouldn't have it any other way. And you may know me online by my silent rhetoric persona. I'm still merging the, the handle with the real name. Uh, so you, you may have seen me there on Twitter or to, by my NFT, silentrhetoric.algo. So, so we appreciate this is an Ethereum conference. We're going to talk a little bit about Algorand. Uh, so we are a layer one, an energy efficient, quantum secure, single layer blockchain with, this is important, instant finality, consistently high throughput, and low fees. And we've been up for five years. It's never gone down. We're very proud of that. So a look back at what Algorand has been doing. We can support over 10,000 transactions per second, so it's fast. Uh, that instant finality comes up with every block. The blocks are printing at about 2.7, 2.8 seconds at the moment. Uh, the fees are a thousandth of an algo. And I think we're approaching 3 billion transactions now on mainnet, again, with zero downtime since inception in 2019. And there's something on the order of 700,000 monthly active accounts on the network. So there's a lot going on on mainnet right now. And we're really proud of the fact that what's going on in Algorand is not theoretical. It's not under construction. A lot of this is live on mainnet right now. So it makes us proud to talk about the stuff people have built on the network. So I mentioned the Algorand roadmap because we have been we have been busy building stuff. So a year or so ago, we laid out this roadmap to dramatically improve the way the protocol works. So that started with what we call the Sicilian defense. These are all chess references, which is dynamic round time. So the network can speed up or slow down depending on how many transactions are going through and kind of adjust on the fly. Uh, we built out AlgoKit 2.0, and soon there will be 3.0, which is a developer toolkit. that makes it very easy to build on Algorand, so you can code faster. And finally, or sorry, not finally, we removed the requirement to store the entire blockchain history on our relays. And state bloat is a real problem for blockchains, so we've made that optional and made it cheaper for people to run nodes on the network, and that's going to come up again, sort of a recurring theme there on our path to accessibility and decentralization. Uh, the Ready is the most recent protocol upgrade we've gone live with. This is consensus incentivization, right? a bit of a mouthful, but it basically means staking rewards. A little bit of history on that point. When Algorand was first created, the philosophy was people are gonna run nodes because their businesses run on this network and they're gonna have an interest in keeping the network running, and so they're gonna to wanna to run a node and contribute for free, essentially. There was no concept of mining, there was no concept of rewards, and it worked to an extent. And we had hundreds of people running nodes around the world, but it got to the point where we said, this probably needs to be incentivized. We need to blow this up, we need to get more people running nodes and really grow the network. So the Ready was a consensus change that brought in block rewards. And we'll talk a little bit about how that works, but you actually can 
earn rewards for every block that you propose as a participation node in our consensus process. And so now you can, uh, you can earn rewards as like a drip if you contribute to running our network. And we've seen the number of nodes basically skyrocket over the past couple of months as this has gone into production. And then I'll just briefly tease the Capablanca variation. So the last phase of this medium-term roadmap is a change to how nodes communicate. Right now, Algorand has a central set of relays, just like 75-ish of these things, and then several thousand participation nodes that connect through the relays. But we're gonna turn that into a, a full peer-to-peer -peer mesh so that these nodes can communicate with each other directly and the need to run expensive relays will be optional. So, I don't know if we'll call that V5, so it's a good question. The question was, will that be Algorand version five, which is the next thing that would come after version four. So we just upgraded to Algorand V4.0 with the staking rewards, but that was a protocol upgrade. It changes how blocks are produced and the payouts that are associated with producing blocks, so it's actually in the consensus protocol. The peer-to-peer -peer change is just in the networking layer. It doesn't actually change how consensus is achieved in the protocol, good question. So, uh, so we talked about staking rewards and peer-to-peer. -peer. This is a, a bit of a, a small diagram, but you can sort of see what's gonna happen with the, the change in the topology of the network with peer-to-peer. -peer. So that's gonna be coming up in the, in the, probably the first half of this year. I can't make too many promises. And in my view, the peer-to-peer -peer mesh network really brings home the original decentralization that people talked about a decade ago where anyone can run a node, anyone can participate. You know, there's no such thing as like a second class citizen. And that accessibility to the network, that's important to me. And I think based on the thousands of people who have been spinning up nodes, I think it's important to a lot of people that they can participate. And it's not just a network run by corporate entities that have deep pockets. Good question? Ah, that's a great question. We'll come to that in a couple of slides. So the question was, do we know where the nodes are? And I have an answer to that question. So hold that thought. So, <laughs> are you preempting my presentation, Patrick? <laughs> All right, so if you want to participate in Algorand staking, a few things to know about this. One is the hardware is cheap. Right? We want this to be accessible. You can run an Algorand node on commodity hardware, a mini PC that you buy off Amazon, or a very inexpensive uh, cloud VPS. Just need uh, eight virtual CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM, 100 meg connection. This is, this is very accessible to people uh, in all, many parts of the world and not too expensive if you want to rent it. Um, I mentioned that every block produced gives you a reward. So it's real time. You don't have to wait for an epoch to end. You don't have to wait for any kind of time delay. And you can actually get notifications on your Parawallet every time you get a block payout. And it brings a smile to my face every time I see another block payout register. So it's fun to stake on Algorand. There's also no slashing, so there's no risk to your stake. What we do in the Algorand consensus protocol is we check to make sure that nodes are participating properly. And if you're not, you get removed from the consensus process. So you don't get slashed, but you have to re-register. There's a little bit of a cost there. You have to pay a fee. Uh, but the, the consensus guys have created a mechanism that checks to make sure you are producing blocks as often as you should be. And it's a random process. There's a, a VRF, a verifiable random function involved. So you never really know when you're going to propose a block, but we can predict how often you should be doing it based on how much stake you have. And finally, we built a terminal user interface or a TUI to help people run their node very easily. Uh, it feels kind of cyberpunk to be moving around in the TUI and managing your node, uh, but we, we stripped out a lot of the manual setup and configuration, and now it's, it's really fun, and even non-technical people are in their terminal running a node, registering their participation keys, and, and they're, they're right in there with us. This is a little preview of the TUI. It's a little bit of a graphical interface, but it lives in your terminal. Handles installing the node, managing the participation keys and registering them. Gives you a little bit of information about how things are going. Uh, can manage updates and so forth. You can actually, this is an old screenshot from version three, and it says update available. <laughs> I know, so we'll, we'll update that one. But it's a good example, actually. 
And I mentioned that you can use a mini PC off Amazon for this. So here's the numbers. Over the past few months, we've gone from about 1,500 nodes to over 4,600. This is a few weeks ago yet. Thank you. Thank you. It really is. It really is amazing that thousands of people are bringing their nodes online and contributing to this decentralized network and its resilience. So the node runners channel of our Discord, I think there's some table tents that have a QR code to join our Discord server, has just been flying. And I'm thrilled to see community members helping other community members get this stuff set up. So it's a real community uh, with, with people helping each other. Vendor distribution. So we're back to your question. We're super proud of this. So it might be a little hard to read on the slide, but the largest chunk of the pie in terms of where are these nodes hosted is various, right? The next is AT&T, next is Comcast. These are single digit percentages, then Hetzner, Verizon Spectrum. Amazon, 4.3%. This is not a network that runs on AWS, right? When you think about who really controls your network, it's the cloud providers, not on Algorand, right? We have a lot of home node runners and an extremely diverse set of uh, node hosting locations. So we're proud of that, and I think it'll pay dividends in the future through resilience. <laughs> yeah, so there's a, a link. Uh, we'll probably publish these slides, but if you if you go to uh, nodely.io, they have a dashboard with a whole bunch of metrics that you can explore. This data comes from them. They're one of the uh, API service providers for Algorand, and they provide all this data for free. Yeah. It's built with Grafana. Yep, that's what that is. And then geographically, so there's a plurality in the US, Germany, and so forth. We also have an extremely global distribution of where the nodes sit. Uh, he also has a, a map, so you can see on a global map with little glowing dots where everything is, and they're in far-flung locations in South Africa and Argentina and Australia, so it is a six-continent distribution, and that is something we're also very proud of. So let's talk about participating in Algorand staking. We have a bunch of ways to do this. What I've been referring to is sort of the solo staking approach. If you use the TUI, this is your node, you're gonna manage it, and this will be uh, you know, your stake on your node. However, that's not the only way that you can do it, but I'll scaffold up to some of the options. So if you wanna run your own node as a solo staker, a couple things to know. One is you can do that with 0.1 algo and contribute to the consensus process. However, to receive rewards, you need to have 30,000 algo with a max of 70 million. And that's a bracket, a range that was set because we want to have a large number of nodes, but not an extremely large number of nodes, which causes problems for distributed networks. And we want people to have some skin in the game. Um, so when you run a node, you can produce blocks and add to the chain, but you also get voting rights on what we're calling network proposals here. So when we do a consensus protocol upgrade, like the version four upgrade or the next one, those are voted in based on node runners upgrading their software. So if you're a node runner and you have stake, you have a direct vote in controlling the version of the software that runs the consensus protocol. So that's where the rubber meets the road. And if you wanna participate in that process to say, we're gonna make the next consensus protocol for a new feature, you know, changing parameters. You're gonna be voting by managing your node and updating the software effectively. And we've covered the low hardware requirements. But then there's a bunch of other ways you can participate as well. We appreciate not everyone has 30,000 algos, not everyone wants to individually manage their node. So you can use pools, you can use liquid staking options or delegated staking options. So I'll, I'll go through those. I probably won't spend too much time on staking pools and the ready pooling protocol because we have Patrick from Transaction Lab who built the ready protocol pooling protocol, and he'll tell you all about it at great length. And then we have delegated staking. So this is where someone else is running a node, and you are giving, essentially, they will generate participation keys on behalf of your account. So they're running the hardware, you've got the stake, but it stays in your account, and you can come to an agreement about some, some fee or commission that you wanna pay for them to take care of the hardware, but you can keep the algos in your wallet. So that's another mechanism that was built uh, by a startup in our ecosystem called Valor. And we're, we're really proud of what they've put together. It's a neat protocol. And then finally, liquid staking. So you have a whole DeFi ecosystem and multiple choices for liquid staking. So this is where you're gonna send your algos to a DeFi protocol. 
they're going to enroll them in consensus and give you a token in return that essentially gives you liquidity equivalent to what you have staked. And then you can play with that in the DeFi ecosystem and, and continue doing what you're doing. So Tiny Man folks, Pact, Compex, and, and there are more as well coming online. So there's a rich ecosystem of ways to participate in Algorand staking. And Liquid staking is particularly important along with the pools because there's no minimum. If you have even one algo, you can contribute to a pool or you can deposit it into a liquid staking protocol and you're right in there and you can get you know, a, a drip of rewards commensurate with the stake that you've deposited. Cool. So the call to action, earn staking rewards today. You can scan the QR code. I tested it from the back of the room, it should work and uh, it'll take you to our staking rewards page that has more information and links to all of these protocols, how to run a node. We've got the technical docs with a quick start tutorial, and we can just basically railroad you right into Algorand staking, even if you are uninitiated. So, we have a question. Oh, great question. Yeah, so the question is about the Algorand governance process. So for the past few years, Algorand has had an on-chain governance process. We're in the 14th quarterly period of that right now. And that process lets people who just hold on to their algos without moving them for that quarterly period vote on proposals related to what's going on with the chain. It could be um, funding parts of the ecosystem, it could be informing decisions about where we go with, uh, with it could be protocol changes, it could be you know, less impactful uh, changes and so forth. So we've had periods where there were dozens of measures that people vote on. That process is transitioning insofar as the governance process will no longer pay out rewards node staking will pay out the rewards, but we'll still have governance. We'll still have questions that people can vote on, but to get the rewards, you'll need to be staking either as a solo node runner or through one of those protocols. Um, but we do wanna emphasize that governance is not ending. There will still be questions to ask of the community, and we are really proud of the on-chain governance process that we've had running for the past few years. And in the, so a session opens today, or may have just opened, uh, for voting on a measure related to the XGov process, which is uh, a community grant funding process that allows community members to actually control the, uh, the allocation of grants to people who have built applications in the ecosystem uh, based on what they've already delivered, so a retroactive grants program. Yeah. They are independent, but you can double dip, so to speak. So if you are a solo staker, for example, you can still commit your algos to that governance period and participate in the vote while you are staking and your algos are contributing to producing block rewards. So you can do both. Yeah. Other questions? A quiet room? All good? All right, folks. Thank you for listening to me talk about the protocol and staking rewards. Uh, I'll put the QR code back up on the screen. If you have any questions, uh, Chris, Gabe, and I are happy to help you if you want to get started. You can also hop into the Discord. I'll pitch that again. Uh, and it, it's really easy. I, I can't underscore how proud we are that we have this accessible process for basically anybody with a decent internet connection and maybe a couple hundred bucks for a new mini PC or an old laptop to participate in our performant layer one network. So thanks very much, it's been a pleasure.